Greetings, my name is Slight, and this is a Gunfire Reborn Overexplain, where we're going to delve into uh, the weapon class of shotguns. Now, I just recently released a video where I did this with pistols, and I got some feedback from you on how to make that particular type of video a little bit more effective and a little bit more useful, and so I'm going to be implementing some of that feedback here. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to go over loosely the weapons in front of you here. There are six shotguns in the game. We're going to quickly go over those. Then I'm going to break down six categories of inscriptions um, and talk about why they're good and why they matter and why some of them might not be as good as you might think. And then I'm going to go and actually uh, in real time analyze, I think it's around 12 uh, shotguns that I pulled randomly from my runs. Uh, so you will get to see how I uh, determine whether or not a, a particular shotgun is any good. So let's go over the weapons in front of us. The first one we have is Argus. Argus is not the best weapon in the game. It staggers anyone it hits, tends to have a hard time hitting enemies that are not very wide. Uh, it does a lot better against bigger enemies and in fact does fairly good damage against bosses uh, for this reason because all the uh, shots will hit. Um, it's a little bit better when you can get right on top of someone and hit them in the head, but in general, the Argus struggles a little bit with damage. Hell is pretty good. Hell has two piercing uh, innately, which can be very powerful. Uh, it is often a weapon that I will keep as a secondary weapon in the early game, just in case I get the Horsehead Elite. Um, it does pretty good damage. Uh, it feels a little bit weak, doesn't feel super strong all the time. Uh, it is spicy, uh, and I wish it was a little stronger. The Illusion is an S-tier weapon, incredibly powerful. It is a machine gun shotgun that increases its rate of fire and number of projectiles as it shoots. Um, there is really... The main issue with Illusion is if you get your rate of fire very high, you actually burn through your ammunition very quickly. Probably the only downside to the weapon. Porcupine is not a very powerful weapon, but it is one of the best um, uh, corrosion applicators in the game. It has a primary and secondary fire, which can essentially be fired at the same time to really maximize your uh, actual projectile output. And I think that each shot of the Porcupine has a 10% chance to apply corrosion. Don't exactly quote me on that. Um, but with the, with the sheer amount of projectiles that it produces, that really increases its ability to apply a lot of corrosion in a short amount of time. We have Pupil, which is definitely another S-tier weapon. Uh, it gets a plus 50% multiplicative damage boost once it's fully charged, and it has high accuracy um, and stability at range. Um, the fact that it does lightning damage doesn't matter, um, and I'm going to talk a little bit here in just a second about why Pupil is so good. Um, because it is interesting why Pupil overperforms when its stats don't really show that it should. Wild Hunt is probably the most interesting and uh, like uh, most true to the core shotgun of the bunch. It is a two magazine shotgun that is incredibly powerful if you can solve its problems, which is a type of weapon that I particularly like, and there are many ways to solve the Wild Hunt's problems. So let's go ahead and move forward. And we'll kind of talk, you'll, I think you'll, you'll get a sense of what I think about shotguns as we look at their inscriptions. So first up, these are the three exclusive inscriptions that are not um, specific to shotguns uh, or specific to the actual weapon of a shotgun. Um, maybe I'm not being exactly clear. So there are exclusives and then there are weapon exclusives. These are just the generic exclusives, all right, that can apply to shotguns. The top one is very strong. Uh, it is especially strong with weapons that already apply an elemental effect. It is a 65% multiplicative damage boost. Uh, it is obviously very weak if you don't have an innate um, elemental effect and in fact may not be worth it uh, if you don't because just Geminiing for this 65 multiplicative damage boost is often not enough. The next one is uh, okay, but once again, we struggle with elemental effects. So uh, if you get this, you have to be applying elemental effects for it to really be working. My understanding is this can only appear on an elemental weapon. Yep, that's correct. So uh, you'll only get this if your weapon is elemental. And in that case, it's like once it's maxed out, so once you have, you know, up to 100%, you're getting essentially 6.66 increased weapon level. That's the way that the additive bonus is uh, calculating. So once you have like a level 30 weapon in the late game, another six levels is really not a huge amount of damage increase. So overall, this tends to be a relatively weak late game inscription. 
Now, this last one is probably the most unique one and benefits the shotguns the most. Uh, magazine capacity becomes two. When the first shot kills something, you recover the ammo, so that's fine. Otherwise, plus 200% lucky shot chance on the second shot. Now, this has some weird interactions, but most notably, if you can force your magazine to stay at one um, uh, out, of, out of two, then you can always reap the plus 200% lucky shot chance on the second shot, which is incredible. To my knowledge, there's only one way to do this right now, and that's with Advanced Depot, where you say you have like a, you know, a pupil with eight shots in it, you shoot seven shots, excuse me, you drop Advanced Depot, shoot seven shots, pick up Advanced Depot, and then, you know, try your hardest not to press R to reload. Uh, and you'll be getting plus 200% lucky shot on every shot. Um, and that does a very, very good job. Um, and I, I, so, and I think it's actually built so that it specifically works with that because it won't recover the one ammo if it didn't consume the ammo. So, you know, just a very specific combo there. But it's actually a good inscription without that, especially if you can get a reload increase. Uh, the magazine capacity becomes two in script exclusive is incredibly good if you can improve your reload speed. Here we have the exclusive inscriptions for each of the weapons. The Argus exclusive is fine, nothing nothing super special there. I, rel I rarely notice the effective range damage decreases, so uh, I think this, you know, the Argus already, I think, goes forever, if I'm not mistaken, um, but it just, you know, deals less damage as it goes further. The piercing plus one is fine, but it's only okay. I just recently did a run with this particular um, exclusive, and it felt fine, but not super powerful. The Hell plus 30% projectile and reload to ammo at a time is quite good. It's a multiplicative damage boost, and the projectile increase is multiplicative, not additive. So it is mul So if you have stuff that's giving you extra projectiles on the weapon, uh, then this is going to increase those as well. Uh, so this is a, a powerful inscription and is almost enough to make Hell worth playing. Um, but I don't think it's quite enough. The Illusion exclusive plus three projectiles and effective rain 80% is very powerful. Um, uh, if you can get that with any accuracy bonus, uh, you will be putting out a huge amount of damage. The, the effective range is much more noticeable on something like the Illusion, frankly, uh, than it is for the Argus, which doesn't do the most damage in general. The Pupil exclusive, Porcupine doesn't have, a, have, doesn't have an exclusive, you know? It should, but it doesn't. Pupil. Lucky shot increased 20% when fully charged, plus 1.0 crit X. This is a great, I mean, it is very powerful. The lucky shot chance is fine, but the crit X is, is probably the best part about it. In general, shotguns have low crit X, so anything that's going to be increasing their crit X is going to be very powerful. Um, yeah, this is exceptionally good. The wild hunt is when firing at an enemy within 5 meters, which is very close. You have to be very close to get within 5 meters. Lucky shot chance plus 80%, that is fine. I wouldn't say it's amazing. It's good, maybe fine, but not amazing. So let's talk about shotguns. One of the drawbacks of shotguns is that A, as I've said, they have low crit, they have a damage spread, they tend to have relatively low accuracy and low stability, but they make up for it in high base damage and large amounts of projectiles. So what you'll notice as you play shotgun builds is that if you can solve these accuracy, stability, and effective range problems that stuff like Wild Hunt um, or Hell has, you're going to start doing some really incredible damage. And a lot of those uh, uh, solutions are actually common inscriptions like the ones we see here. I make the case that these are probably the best inscriptions you can get on most of the shotguns in the game, and they are green ones. Um, by increasing your accuracy, re you reduce spread significantly. By, inc by increasing your stability, you really are able to stay locked on a target. And uh, by increasing your effective range, it means you can actually be in the mid-range without taking significant damage losses uh, because of the effective range cutoff of damage. Um, I still don't, I I'll double down and say that I don't have the strongest sense of effective range, but I do know that it impacts me, and I wish I knew a little bit more about it. Here are the powerful rare inscriptions for shotguns. Obviously, um, this top one is probably, uh, you know, very, very good on all of them. I would say that, uh, in general, fire is probably your best one to get. Lightning is, is fine. Um, but if you're going for a shotgun build, you really aren't 
you usually aren't trying to build like a miasma build. Um, usually you're looking for either a triple element or a combustion build if you're going for elements because you want to get that extra combustion damage and do large chunky damage. Um, uh, but Gemini isn't bad because you're shooting a large amount of pellets. It does make it easier for you to apply uh, uh, elemental effects a little bit more easily, assuming that you are actually hitting people. So um, it's very strong. I won't say that I've messed around a lot with elemental shotgun builds, but they exist for a reason, and I assume that they're probably very strong. This second inscription might surprise you, but it's very powerful with shotguns. Uh, take the Wild Hunt, which has two, two ammo. Your first shot gets no bonus, but your second shot gets a 50% uh, lucky shot chance every every second shot. So if you look at this, it's basically plus 25% lucky shot for a weapon like that. But for something like a Pupil or uh, Hell, which tend to have a lot more ammo, you're going to really reap the rewards of this. Um, and that being said, uh, if you use a, this particular inscription can be combined with a clip size increase um, on a wild hunt and if you do something like that where you have like 70 shots on a wild hunt this thing really really adds up as far as its damage is concerned because we're looking for uh, weapons that have good stability because it solves a problem uh, with uh, shotguns um, this particular, this next inscription, which is the lucky shot chance plus 50%, stability minus 50%, is very powerful, but needs to be taken at the right time. If you're trying, if you take this, if you have this inscription, and then you do the crit X Gemini on a weapon that doesn't have any increase in stability, you're going to be having a really hard time sticking on your target. Um, and it's going to be hard for you to actually meaningfully do damage. So while this is powerful, it needs to be taken in the right circumstances, but I would say in general, it's very good. Uh, and even if this is the only stability decrease that you have, you're in a very good spot. One thing I haven't noticed, and I'll talk about, actually I'll talk about it here in just a bit. These three rare inscriptions, I'm going to make the case, are kind of uh, uh, traps. They look strong. They're specific to shotguns. Only shotguns can get these, but in general they tend to be pretty weak. The create bullet chase, the create a bullet to chase nearby enemies on crit hit, the way the damage of those chasing bullets is calculated is very low. I've already talked to the devs about this and it looks like this is going to be something that's going to get addressed but hasn't been addressed yet. The 10% lucky shot chance but minus 10% accuracy is better than it used to be. Um, it used to be minus 30% accuracy and it was very bad but this is up to 10 stacks and uh, each stack refreshes itself and the, and the stacks last 10 seconds. Um, this, can actually, this one can actually be very good, but because it does decrease your accuracy, it can actually be a pretty big deal that, uh, you know, because of the strategy that I'm suggesting, which is that you keep your accuracy, getting reduction in accuracy means you have to be right on top of people, which is extremely dangerous. So the more that you can play in the mid-range with a shotgun, the better off you're going to be. And lastly, similar problem here, reducing effective range for a 35% weapon damage increase is really not worth it. That's an additive increase. You have to be within 8 meters, and getting a 50% effective range is a huge negative. So uh, I would say that most of the time these are not worth it. Uh, there are some rare instances where they're good, but in general, these are traps. Here are some situational inscriptions uh, that don't appear all the time. Uh, but they are specific for, for certain weapons. So doubling an elemental effect chance is good on shotguns that have elements. The plus 5% rate of fire for 2 seconds on a crit hit is quite good on shotguns that can get this, uh, like Hell or um, uh, Porcupine. Because you're doing so many hits, potentially, in just one hit, you could uh, theoretically get plus 75% rate of fire increase on your first shot. Um, and maybe that's uh, overstating it a little bit, but I, I guess it's technically true. Um, stuff like the Illusion is very powerful with this. Hell is very powerful with this. Um, even the Argus can be very good with this. Plus 3.0 Crit X to the first shot after reload is very good on the Wild Hunt specifically. Because of its low Crit X uh, innately, having something like this where you're reloading a lot um, is very, very powerful. Obviously, if you're doing a no reload synergy, then uh, this would not be good. And keep in mind that it doesn't have anything to do with the magazine magazine size or what your current magazine is or whether it's full. It is literally just the first shot, so it does work that way where it is the first shot no matter what. That being said, uh, it is a 250% multiplicative damage increase um, on a crit, 
if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it's a lot, if it's not that specifically, um, and it's very good. Reload speed and uh, when reloading an empty magazine, magazine, reload speed plus 50%. Both of these tend to be pretty good for most of the shotguns, but especially the Wild Hunt. Uh, Wild Hunt, uh, its damage per second increases massively when you can hit all of the bullets and you can solve its slow reload time. And both of these both of these green inscriptions do that very well. In general, my my best Wild Hunt runs have been with all green Wild Hunts. Now, before we move on, I wanted to just touch on Gemini's. I, I don't have that brought up. Um, but Gemini's are kind of across the board. You can do some element uh, uh, Gemini-ing on uh, shotguns, and you're going to have some success for the reasons that I talked about earlier. In general, Crit X uh, is one of the best ones that you can do because of their low innate Crit X. Um, that means that any crit you add, so if you go from a two times crit to a five times crit, that is a massive increase in crit damage. But if you go from like a three, from a four times crit, to an eight times crit, it's only a, you're only doubling your crit damage. Whereas uh, with the two to five, you're uh, you're more than doubling it. Uh, so the lower your your innate crit X, the better a crit X Gemini is, and that's definitely true for shotguns here. Um, the increasing the magazine size can be good on something like Wild Hunt. Uh, could be good on something like Hell too if you have something that can really increase your rate of fire, because um, Hell's rate of fire is pretty slow. Um, stuff with Porcupine is probably one of the best elemental Gemini uh, users because you start, you use the Porcupine and then elemental Gemini it with something else like uh, a lightning weapon. Um, and that will be a very powerful uh, miasma applicator as a shotgun. Um, and I think that covers all of the most important ones. I'm not too sure how the new Gemini quite works. If, if I understand correctly, it doesn't seem particularly strong. Um, this is the 50% base damage increase uh, uh, whenever you kill when you, like, you kill something with the other weapon. Um, so I, I'm, I'm going to... The, the jury's still out on whether or not that's powerful. So I think that covers all the inscriptions that I wanted to bring up that uh, affect this particular class of weapons. So let's go ahead and rate some weapons in real time. All right, so first up we have this porcupine plus four. So notice that we have the lucky shot, but accuracy decrease. Not as bad on the porcupine because its initial shot is a single pellet. So the accuracy isn't as bad on this weapon. Actually decrease, excuse me. We've got the crit X increase, uh, which is actually quite good. I might should have included that for the same reasons that Crit Gemini is good, getting just a flat 0.4 Crit X on these low Crit X weapons is, is quite strong. We've got the effective range and stability. I'd say this is pretty good. You know, having stability and effective range on this is okay. The biggest problem with this is that realistically what we're looking to do with Porcupine is apply elemental effects. So the fact that we have a bunch of damage inscriptions here um, are not going to matter very much because this thing is not going to do a huge amount of damage. So I'd say overall this is pretty weak. All right, next up we've got an Argus. Looks like an early game Argus, too, with magazine capacity 2, filling the magazine, and projectile speed. I'd say that this is above average for an Argus. It Because it's an Argus, it's still not absolutely insane enough for me to really use it. Um, and the biggest problem with this is, like, I would... You know, maybe I would do this if the blue inscription was, like, the reload speed increase like the 55% reload speed, because the projectile speed on the Argus is very good. The projectiles in Argus are slow, okay? So if we solve that, that's good. We don't really need fill magazine when we have the magazine capacity 2, so that's a dud. The magazine capacity 2 is very good, but it needs an activator. So I'd say overall this is fine, but not strong. So this illusion is very powerful. Um, illusion is already very strong, so we don't need a huge amount to get it exceptionally powerful. But because it is lightning damage, uh, it's going to be very good at applying the shock effect. The magazine capacity is great. The accuracy and stability is wonderful. And the green inscription that lets you recover 50% ammo to the magazine when you kill an enemy is not bad. Uh, especially because you have that magazine capacity increase and because stopping shooting with an illusion is not fun. Um, I would say overall this is very strong. 
I could easily see, you know, using this weapon the whole game and not even re-rolling these inscriptions. You know, you get a Gemini, Gemini this to like crit X or another element type, you're golden. I would say this is a very powerful wild hunt. Uh, the 80, the, it's not amazing. Don't get me wrong. It's not S tier. I'd say this is like B tier wild hunt. We've got the effective range and accuracy increase, not stability. The accuracy increase is the better one on wild hunt because it has such a huge spread. Same for hell. The accuracy increase is the better one, uh, but stability is very good too. Um, magazine capacity uh, is very, very strong. I think that, yeah, doubles the magazine capacity because it always rounds up. So because it's 60% and not 50%, we go from two magazine to four. And that allows us to really start pumping out some damage. Lucky shot's great. Uh, plus 80% weapon damage on the first shot is essentially like plus four weapon levels on one shot. And that's not very good. Uh, but because we have uh, three inscriptions that are meaningful, two of which are powerful, this is like a B tier wild hunt. Pretty good. This pupil is quite strong. Um, pupil in general is very good, but when you can get something that has the double elemental effect, you're in a very pow powerful position. We also have reload speed increase, which isn't as important on this weapon as others because of its 10 magazine size. Um, the 50% lucky shot after killing an enemy is not very good. The other inscription that increases, that fills the ammo in the magazine is also not very good. But we can re-roll those green inscriptions into something a bit better. So if I saw this, I'd be very happy with it. Um, I'm looking at a couple re-rolls away from having an, a very powerful weapon. Um, if I uh, Gemini this with fire or or uh, with corrosion, I'll be in a very good spot. The reason I would Gemini with fire is not really for manipulation, but um, to do f uh, bonus damage against stuff like the UFOs. If you go for like you know, shock corrosion, you end up doing minus 25% damage to the UFOs, which is essentially half the damage you would be doing if you had fire damage. So, you know, that's something to consider in these situations. This is a, this is a good weapon early. You know, if I, if I saw illusion plus two with reload speed, I'd be very happy with it. Um, it's nice to have reload speed plus 40% as opposed to the empty magazine plus 55, so you can reload at any time. Um, the shock effect is, you know, not very useful, but because this weapon is, you know, S tier already, uh, it's it would be, this would be a fine weapon to use in the early game. This weapon is absolutely ridiculous. This is an S tier porcupine. Um, and it's because there's this this inscription that I did not include in the video earlier, which is the plus 50% elemental effect chance upon hitting an enemy up to 500% resets on a miss. That is incredibly powerful on shotguns specifically uh, because of the amount of hits that they do. So this will basically, and if I'm not mistaken, this uh, at least at one point wasn't working correctly and literally added 50% to your chance of dealing decay. Uh, meaning like in two hits, you had over 100% chance. Um, not sure if it's still working that way. Either way, uh, up to 500% um, uh, is very easy to get. Um, it resets on a miss, but it's happening while all the projectiles are being calculated. Um, so this ends up, you know, having a huge elemental effect chance uh, as opposed like to what it would normally be. So Geminiing this with a with a lightning weapon uh, or a fire weapon would end up doing truly massive damage um, just because of this one inscription. The reload increase is actually quite nice because it is easy to burn through 12 magazine when you're doing left and right click on this weapon. So yeah, very strong. This is okay. I could see that I would use this early. Um, the rate of fire decrease on illusion does not feel good because you really need to be shooting to get the rate of fire up so that you're you know shooting at max speed that being said the crit x plus 1.2 is very powerful on uh on shotguns in general and if i saw this before going into a boss and didn't have anything else i would probably take this this would do a lot of damage to that boss because we've essentially doubled our crit damage um just by picking up this you know crit x uh, so if we double our crit damage, but only take a, 
you know, a slight loss in overall damage because of the rate of fire. I think we're we're coming out ahead. Uh, this is pretty good. I think my there we go. I guess my ah, oh, there we go. Anyway, I'd say this is quite bad. Um, the biggest problem with this is that we don't have anything that solves reloads. We don't have anything that solves accuracy. In fact, our accuracy gets worse. The plus 30% weapon damage against elites and bosses is additive. It's like two extra levels. Um, the lucky shot's fine. The effective range and stability look cool, but they don't have the accuracy to back it up. So this is trash. This is an extremely powerful illusion. Now, I would not be doing a elemental share with this necessarily. I think I might be going for a crit share because I have double accuracy increases. I've got piercing. Oh, geez. Those green inscriptions there are very powerful. Um, the piercing plus one and then, and then projectile speed, accuracy, effective range, double accuracy and stability increase. Very powerful. I think I would get a you know, a bigger benefit out of giving, you know, taking my crit X from 2.5 to, uh, like if I could get it up to 6.5 with a strike wing share, uh, share crit Gemini, that would be very good and probably do more damage than this, uh, uh, elemental effect thing would, but very, very powerful easily with these inscriptions could be the one that you take all the way to the end. All right, I think I've got two more, including this one. So one more after this. Yeah, this is very good. Double the elemental effect chance. Um, the lucky shot is is very powerful because we have a, the ability to actually build a combustion build off of this. The, the create a bullet chased nearby enemies on crit hit is like very little damage increased. I mean, it's fine, but it's like nothing special. Um, but the plus 50% weapon damage against stuff and burning really sets this up to be actually doing some crazy damage against uh, with a combustion build. So this is very strong. Obviously, this is a little older. I got this off the Discord. Um, but yeah, this is a very good porcupine. I could easily see this isn't like S tier weapon. It's like A tier. Um, this would do very well. And it's all because it has double elemental effect chance. It already has a crazy ability to apply elemental effect chance. So now we're just in the stratosphere. Um, and we have this multiplicative damage increase against burning. Super good. And here, um, let's see if I can do this. We've got a wild hunt. Yeah, this is good. You know, I could easily see this being used to, you know, Gemini this with fire damage or something. Um, I think the uh, elemental effect chance for this is like 5%. The bullet chasing is not good, but the magazine capacity and the reload speed are often enough uh, to, to really take something like a wild hunt uh, into viability. Uh, we'd love to see something like accuracy on here, but I could kind of see you getting away without it because you have this elemental capacity. So I'd say this is pretty good, like B, even maybe A tier, um, depending on what you're, you know, what you're working with. Um, this is interesting. Yeah, I'm not not exactly sure that uh, this is good or bad. I think it's good, and I think that does it. All right, so we did another. We tried again. We added some more information. Please let me know if this was better than the pistol one and gave you some more context on how to choose shotguns in your games. Um, and uh, you guys know the drill. I make these for fun. I enjoy knowledge transfer. I really strongly believe that if I'm going to learn something, that like part of me learning it is teaching people. Uh, because otherwise, it just stays in here and then it, it doesn't go anywhere. Um, and like so much of the whole world's knowledge is just trapped in people's heads. What happens if they if they die? I'm not going to say I'm going to die. I might actually need to stop talking. Have an excellent day. If you want to sub, don't sub for me. I haven't monetized this channel. I'm considering it after talking to my fiance. She's like, she says like, you don't have to change anything. Like if you're going to do it, you might as well do it, right? Um, but you don't have to change anything about what, the way you're doing it. And I'm like, okay, maybe. But then it's like, I have this feeling that, you know, if you're incentivized to advertise it fundamentally like 
like I don't know for me it feels like I would prefer I would prefer to watch someone who like gets donations or um, gets uh, like funded in a different way besides advertising because advertising is like just not a good thing anyway it's on that's something I'm thinking about so if you want to if you want to sub sub for you don't sub for me I'm cool we're cool have an excellent day and Merry Christmas if you don't celebrate Christmas happy holidays I hope you're getting some time off at this time of the year peace out